Hi everybody, thanks for taking the time to watch this presentation. I'll be covering off the Algo 8180 IP alerter and pager. The 8180 has a dual function, has two SIP registrations. One we can use as an alerter and one for paging. Let's go through the alerting first. Basically as an alerter, it can be set up to, for example, as a loud bell. So if we, for example, put a um, new cloud-based hosted system into a business or a local IPPVX installation, and this particular customer has a warehouse or a workshop area, that they used to have a loud bell in on the old analog system, we will need a voice over IP equivalent to um, replace it with. So instead of mucking around with uh, ATAs and extra wiring and 240 volt bells and uh, all that extra time they're going to invest and waste in putting together a, a bolted together or a hodged together system, we can actually replace that loud bell with an 8180. Now using one of the SIP registrations that are on this unit, we can now make it so that when that SIP registration is rung, the 8180 will ring on an incoming call. So, and that the volume can be adjusted up and down as per needed, and or it can actually be dynamic depending on the, um, the ambient noise in the environment that the 8180 is in. On the other side of the coin, we can also use it as a pager. So it's got a second SIP registration we can set up for a paging unit. So when we dial another SIP extension, e.g. 201, the 8180 will chime, as in for the paging coming through, and then you are speaking through and can do paging. Okay. Now, the advantages of, of this is that you can use the 8180 in the most basic format in what we've just talked about, but we can also start um, using it in more complex solutions for a customer. For example, we can have up to seven paging groups on the 8180 called multicast or paging groups as we used to know them. So, and we can either dial them individually through different master units and have um, additional slave units. For example, if I had uh, one master unit with extension 201, I could put another five 8180s in different parts of the building across the same LAN network and set them a slave and have them multicasting into a different group. So we're going to have page group one, five of them go off, page group two, another six different units would go off. So, but all using one SIP registration. We could even get to the point where we can dial a the, the main extension number on the master unit and then dial a pre-code, a DTMF code into the unit to activate the individual paging groups. So we could just have one registration instead of multiple. It's, it's totally flexible and then up to you how you manage it. Manage it. So we've got the multicasting scenarios, of which we'll go into more detail later. Where would we use this? Well, right now we are doing an awful lot of schools. Schools are a good market because they are upgrading through with all the fiber and etc., voice over IP, data networks, etc. As new schools are built, they are putting fiber between buildings and fiber between floors, and then naturally with the distribution category 5, category 6 um, network, uh, IP network going out around the rooms. So they can't use their old traditional paging. Now, a lot of them had this, the old analog and copper-based um, paging systems, but naturally these now won't work over um, over fiber, so they need to be replaced and or integrated with. There are a number of options on how to integrate with, but the schools are a definite target market for the ELGO. We've also got prisons, we've got warehousing, truck stops, supermarkets, retail stores, airports, security buildings. The list goes on. Basically, wherever you want to have a paging and or ringing solutions, the ELGO will um, suit and set it and do the job very well. On top of that, well, through we're just talking about the 8180 in this presentation, we've also got the 8301, which is a basically uh, a integration unit to um, to an analog paging, but it also can do broadcast schedules, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we'll go into that a little bit more later. The coverage of a 8180 um, 
this table goes through various examples, home, national, converse, natural, normal conversation, factory, busy, machine shop, etc. Just gives you an idea of, of how much sort of what coverage an 8180 will give. So for example, in a quiet warehouse, the a lone 8180 would be um, 250 meters. Um, voice paging would be 64 meters. Okay, so it just gives you a snapshot of what sort of coverage you're going to get. But this, of course, remember, this will entirely depend on the environment that you're working in. This is a guideline only. So let's have a, a look at the physical unit itself. It's a compact little unit, very well built, solid quality. So this is the, uh, the front view. The two things I just wanted to point out on this is that, number one, you've got a little microphone here. This is used in conjunction, it's optional, can be used in conjunction for when you page or call the unit on auto answer, you can actually talk back and have a two-way conversation because it has this, this microphone all on board. So uh, areas, sort of example you'd use that in is in a classroom where you've got the, um, an 8180 for paging within the classroom and you could actually activate it, ring it, and then people can actually yell back at you if you're looking for the teacher or whatever application you want to use it for. The blue light indicator down the bottom here tells you the status of the system, what's happening with it, and you can also program it to be a message waiting light if you so wish. For example, if there's a message in the office of somebody, it'll sit there flashing blue. So again, just another little, little trick you can use to the, do with the units. This is the back of the unit. I want to spend a little bit of time here because it is, is it's actually very well put together and, and the techs actually love this unit because it is so damn easy to install. Um, fundamentally, you've got a network connection there. That is PoE. That's how you power it up. If you don't have uh, a PoE switch or um, to plug into it, you need to get a PoE injector. Now you've got the terminals here. This is a, an output. The first two here is an output for an external speakers where you can actually put, I uh, think it's an 8106 uh, Bullhorn, Algo Bullhorn speaker on it. So you can actually have this unit here paging in a warehouse and then cable off a analog bullhorn off it to page in another zone. So you're double, doubling the area that you're actually covering. You've got an audio input and you've got a dry contact relay. Let's just move over, over to the right hand side one where we've just gone down this list here. These little buttons down the bottom here make the algo really nice to install. First of all, you can play what the ringtone is um, by pressing the play key, etc., and adjust the volume, etc., manually um, if you're actually next to the unit. You can also control that via the browser as well to program it. But one of the key things is, is once you actually plug this into the network, it's a DHCP deployment um, by default. So there's two ways you can actually find the IP address. Number one, there is, there is some software called uh, the Algo Locator. And that will scan the entire customer's network and find all the Algo products that are there and give you the IP address. The other way, if you just plugged it in, is simply press this menu button here three times down to, um, and the unit will talk to you every time you, you, you're you pressing it. And it'll basically, on the third port, uh, thing, it'll say um, give a device status. And then if you press select to select that option, this button down there, then it'll actually talk to you and tell you what the IP address is, e.g. 192.168.1.114. And it'll just keep repeating that until you tell it to stop. So from a technician's perspective, you plug it in, you mount it, uh, get the IP address, mount it, walk away down to your laptop. You can program it. You can test the ringing. You can test the page. Set everything all up, all via the browser, whilst you're in the room if you've got um, a wireless connection. So a nice easy unit to install and use. When you're mounting it, it comes with its own uh, bracket. Uh, the bracket here just screws to the wall, two screws, and then to clip it in, uh, your network cable come in the back, connect the network cable, you put it in the top, and then just drop it down and clicks, and it locks very nicely into the bracket. Physical dimensions of this thing, it's not a huge footprint at all, so it's uh, pretty unobtrusive. It's 16 centimeters high by 10 centimeters wide, and at this point here, it's 5.5 centimeters at the widest point. And there's the footprint of the, the bracket. Pretty straightforward. 
Some of the specifications, just a couple of points or three, you can look through the list yourself here. Just a couple of points I want to point out. Number one is the power input, 48 volt PoE, class zero, okay? It gives you the wattage here. I just wanted to flag this, not so much from an algo's perspective, but more from the point of what you are going, what switch you're going to perspective, uh, uh, put on it, what PoE switch you're going to buy. A lot of the PoEs aren't created equal. Some of them are sort of say, well, I've got a 60 watt maximum power allowance, or a 55, or an 80 watt, or a 70 watt, or 120 watt. When you're deploying a voice over IP, um, when you're deploying voice over equipment full stop, please be aware of what the maximum loads are of each device. Otherwise, you could overload the um, device to the point devices could fail. Okay. Now, an algo at maximum power draw, an 8180, is 12.95 watts. Now, that is generally at paging or ringing at full volume. So the amplifier is really cranked up. At idle, it's only one watt. Okay. So just just when you're putting together your solution, just, just manage what PoE switches you are using or what PoE switches the customer has got. And just be aware of the trap because of post-deployment, suddenly uh, a phone starts playing up or an algo um, uh, 8180 restarts for some any reason when you're paging. 99.9% .9 of the time, that will be your problem. The PoE switch is under spec. Anyway, configuration, web interface, you can auto provision, etc. Talks about the sound, internal memory is 3 meg for um, recordings. And you can actually set, um, record your own announcements and recordings and ringing and etc. and load them up into the, um, the unit. The relay, um, 30 volts, 50 milliamps, speaker output, audio output. It talks about the default ringtones that are loaded into the unit, what environment you're meant to be in non-condensing don't put it in the rain it's not waterproof if you want a waterproof unit of this type you're looking for the 8186 i believe it is off the top of my head uh, nat compliance and dimensions just want to touch off a few points with the advanced paging and ringing the technical side uh, added on to the end of this presentation the technical um, presentation we'll go into this in more detail but from a sales perspective effectively the 8180 has got nine multicast zones e.g we call them page groups but out of that nine you can use six or seven of them uh, and then you've got things like all page you've got um, music on hold that you can play through it so these are these are accounted as part of the channels okay so have a talk to us about that if you particularly want to go to the zones and we'll be talking a little bit about the uh, 8301 and next couple of points down. The paging zones can be set up in a single zone by dialing a SIP registration number or as DTMF selectable. Now what that means is that let's just pick on the DTMF selectable. Let's say we've got one master unit and then we are going to dial into it and then dial, dial the extension number and then star one and that'll page star group one, star two, group two, three, etc. Okay, so that's just using one SIP registration and some post digits to access the multicasting and we can set up all the, the different, um, the different um, paging groups, okay? Or we can have a, a master for each group and then include the slaves into the different groups. And so you, you're dialing individual um, SIP registrations on individual masters around the thing. I hope that makes sense. If not, let us know. The algo uh, page and endpoints can be the 8180, the 8188, the 8186, and the 8128. Fundamentally, very much the same. So once you get your head around what the 8180 can do, for example, the 8186, which is the bullhorn weatherproof version of this, is just about identical in, in regards. Now, well, through at the moment, I've just been talking about basically uh, a ringer and using it in a ring environment or paging and some, some basic um, paging groups. If you start, if you use um, the 8301, which is a controller unit, that can expand you to 50 multicast units. Okay. Now, on a, a large site, this is this is really a controller is, is the way to go. The controller also has um, scheduled announcements, etc. So you can have it for a bell cycle in a school, um, uh, announcements made during a school day, announcements made at an airport. You, know, you hear hear all these bing bong announcements. Don't leave your bags lying around. That sort of thing. This is what the 8301 will do. So there's actually a separate presentation on the 8301 on the site, which I suggest you look at. 
um, but for solutions, just because you, you might sell, you'll, in your sales, you'll have one or two or maybe five units in one sale. But in a larger deployment, this is a full blown solution in regards to management and control and announcements and all that kind of thing. And there's a couple of diagrams later I'll just we'll touch on. But if you want the full information on that, go to the 8301 presentation. Um, the IP paging points, I haven't picked on the 8180 particular in this area, can be in multiple paging groups, e.g. so you can have a unit and paging group uh, 3, 5, and 6. Okay, so then you just tick those options in the um, in the unit, and then now that unit's across that group. No problems. The number of algo page in page and endpoints is unlimited. E.g., you could have 180, 180 as the master pager, and then you can have hundreds, and I mean hundreds, of um, other slave 8180s. And when you page that one unit, everyone else will page at the same time. Okay. Um, you can put them into multiple page groups, what we've talked about. You can have up to five SIP registrations used for ringing. Okay, now this is a quite a handy little extra we've got here. So what we can do here is that we gave an example where you've got a warehouse that when an incoming call comes in, the algo will ring. Well, what if we've got two different companies or we've got two different departments, sales and service? We could actually have a second SIP registration that will actually ring in a totally different ringtone. We could actually even have a, um, a recording and load it up saying, this is a call from uh, ABC company. This is a call from ABC company. And it keeps repeating and repeating and repeating. Or then uh, if they dial the other option or it comes on a different set of lines and rings the other SIP registration, it can, can say, this is a, a call from XYZ. Okay. Now, extreme you could actually do recordings or you could just simply use different ringing so and the staff would know that this call i'm about to pick up off the um, algo is this and or this call is the other one okay so quite quite flexible very handy you can assign these ringing registrations to any other multicasting groups etc some of the key features and capabilities loudness it's an integrated amplifier it's a very it's a very highly tuned speaker, and, and I know that sounds all very salesy and everything, but I'm telling you, it is. It's gorgeous. It's the loud. You can you can put the Elgo 8180 into full volume, and whether it's barking, bonging, you know, and I'm talking that when you're next to these things and it's starting to do some of the the ringtones, like one of them's like a Big Ben clock bonging, you can feel it. The vibrations hitting you. It actually you can physically feel it. But the speaker is not distorting. It is, it is really quite high quality. I love this product. I really do. Um, from a technical point of view and a sales point of view. So it, it's I can't emphasize it. It's a Canadian product and it is good product. Multicasting, we've talked a, a bit about that. So we won't go too far into that master-slave relationship. The ambient noise conversation using sound care. It's trademark technology. Fundamentally, the example of that would be in a quiet room like I'm in right now, the um, and the phone call came in. It's not going to blast across noisily. It's going to tune itself to the the amount of noise that's in the room. So it's softly ringing. But then I might have 20 people in this room talking really loudly, and the Elgo 8180 is going to adjust the ringing so that people can hear it in regards to the noise that's out there. And we've got outputs to external equipment and devices, uh, loudspeakers, etc. Configuration provisioning is all done via the uh, browser, or you can uh, point it to a provisioning server using uh, TFTP, FTP, or HTTP, and point out it using um, your DHCP um, options. Paging talkback, we've talked about that with the microphone, so you can talk backwards and forwards. Ringtones, we've got several preloaded ringtones all on board, but you can also have your own voice announcement or sound effects. Um, with the 8301 particularly, we could actually set up, or even um, on a very basic system, we could set up one of the um, SIP extensions. So when you dial it, it has a, a lockdown alarm. So it plays a uh, an alarm of, uh, this is a, the school is in lockdown, please um, 
all pebbles are to do da 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 da. As long as the um, unit is ringing, it'll play this message. Okay, the 8301 does it much better, but at a very at a pinch, you can get the um, same sort of solution or similar solution with the um, 8180. And the blue light indicator we have also talked about in regards to what we can use it for um, message waiting or uh, whether it's registered or whatever programmable. So deployment examples, just some basic pictures just to, to sort of show you a little bit of how it works. Using SIP, um, now we've got a cloud in the middle here, so he can be pretty much anything. Next slide goes into and details that more. But fundamentally, we've got a SIP phone. It rings the SIP registration on the multicast or pages it, for example. And at the same time, this slave, this slave, and this slave will actually go off hook. And these are all the different models, ceiling, um, mounted speaker, um, bullhorn, etc. So that's what your multicast fundamentally is doing. What can you connect it to? As long as it's SIP, it doesn't matter. You can connect it to anything. It's, um, it's whoopsie, I'll go back up one. It's, it can be a, a local SIP server, um, 3CX, uh, Trixbox, um, IPPX, NEC, Transtel, Hybrix. Um, the list goes on. It doesn't matter what you connect it to. It can be um, as long as it's a SIP compliant unit, it will work. Okay, just avoid your encryptions and all that kind of thing. It's just got to be a standard SIP. Everything's driven off the POE. Or we can have a hosted solution. Okay, again, doesn't matter if what the the host did could be two talk, could be um, could be anything, could be a, a Mitel host, it could be again, doesn't matter when it boils down to it. As long as the SIP compliant the um, 8180 will work um, um, behind the net, etc. Multicast, so if we've got a SIP server in the cloud, for example, on this, this stage, we've got a router going through the POE, we've got a multicast master speaker, and he's paging from a local call. So the local call here has dialed the um, SIP number. It's, it's through the switching uh, of the SIP server, it's gone through to the master, and now we're paging off to the various devices. Now, the point, the only point I'm trying to make here is really it, you can put the specific device you need for that specific area. For example, the 8186 in a, in a warehouse area or bullhorn or an open area, weather, you know, it's going to be hit by the weather, that type of thing, that's where you want to put it, and then you say just horses for courses are what you need. Finally, just really want to have a, a little bit talk, of a talk about the Algo 8301. Now, this unit here, I've referred to before, and there is a, a full presentation for it, but fundamental, what it's used for is, let's say you've got a school, and they're putting in new buildings, but the old buildings are still there, and they've still got the old analog paging system. But you've gone to put in a brand new SIP solution, um, cloud or IP, local IPPX, don't really care. We need to integrate that with that, which is an analog amplifier, okay? So the first thing that the 8301 will do is that you can set it up as a SIP registration and it'll interface through to your existing analog amplifier. At the same time now, it will also now start managing your SIP um, paging speakers, e.g. the 8180s or 8186s, etc. So you can now start setting up your, you know, your multicast groups and paging and all that kind of thing through to um, your new part of your building, which has all got fiber all through the floors, etc. And finally, the other thing it does is it's got a scheduler functionality in it. So we can have years, days of the week and set a whole bunch of different scheduled plans into that day. For example, we could on a school, we could set up the bell uh, environment. So for, you know, pre-bell, before we get into the first class, 15 minutes before you get to class, the class starts, class stops, lunch times, um, morning teas, afternoon teas. Um, even to the point if you have a parent teacher's day, you can actually have um, announcements going off through the paging system telling parents when to get in and out of the next, to the next meetings. You can have it in a, um, a retail shop where you've got scheduled music going through the PAs and background music, which is piped in. But then you've also got announcements upon the, the um, 
the, uh, the, the staff accessing the paging system via the phone for announcements, but also pre-planned scheduled announcements, safety, OSH. The, the list is boundless from what you can do with this thing. You can, in a, in, a, in a factory environment, you could have OSH announcements playing regularly through the day, saying, don't forget, don't put your hand in the bandsaw type scenario, you know? It's, it just continues on and on. The imagination suddenly starts going a little bit crazy. So this is a really good product, and it complements anything that you're currently selling, in, whether you're selling hosted or um, on-premise um, IP equipment. This is uh, really a nice little unit. Okay, guys, <clears throat> now we're going to actually um, have a look inside of the um, 8180 to see how to program it. So as you know earlier, if you press the um, select button on the back of the um, phone, you can get the IP address number. So once you've got the IP address number, you put it in. In my case, it's 192.168.1.14. So I'm going to log into there. And this is the um, main login page. Throughout the whole thing, the actual um, unit's actually telling you a whole bunch of information. You've got your firmware version up there. Few things about um, registering your SIP, registering your um, Algo, etc. So anyway, let's log in. So the password is Algo, tells you that by default, and in you go. So this is your basic settings. <clears throat> looks just you know most of these should be very familiar to you, but we'll go through them. So there's your uh, the SIP domain. Um, so we're going to be pointing the registration at. Leave it at uh, monitor ring event register SIP extension. Page function is enabled. Allow SIP register is enabled. So, what you've got here is you've got two registrations. First of all, you've got a ring extension. So, there's ex ring extension number, authorization ID, and password. Okay. And then, if you move down the page, you have got your page extension. So, that will be a different extension number from here. So in this case, we could go 896, 896, and then the password. Okay, and then once we've got that, we go save. Okay, <clears throat> so only rule about this here <clears throat> is make sure you use two separate extension numbers. If you register it as the same, you will start getting a lot of problems with paging and ringing happening, depending on which one's registered first, because the, um, the algo will actually try and register both, and your SIP, IPvX or server, will only take one registration. <clears throat> so once that's done, let's move, move on, and you'll be registered. This particular unit is actually offline, but just to give you an idea on how to program it. <clears throat> So if we go into the ring tab, I'm still on the basic settings, we can now set our ringtone in regards to what sort of ringtone we want, and whether it's going to be dogs, chimes, buzzer, ringing, etc., etc. We can set a ring volume as in very loud to not so loud. Okay, so that is just by control here, right down to very low. Okay, we can also set it to just um, no limit, so ring as long as the um, extension is ringing, or we can actually set it to a number of limits, uh, um, number of rings. Pretty self explanatory. If we move into our page tab, we can now go into what is our page um, volume going to be set at. <clears throat> and again, 1 through to 10, and we can apply that. Our page mode, where there's one way or talk back. Okay, so generally it'll be one way, but you might have a situation where it'll be um, talk back. Timeout, e.g. it'll stay open um, for no, so <clears throat> it'll stay open as long as you're paging, or we can actually put a timer on it, if you so wish. What page tone will be played when you um, access page? So this is just a page notification, which is like a, uh, it's just like a tone, and then the um, your page and voice comes through. 
your G711, or G722 support, automatic gain control, and um, delay, you can pretty much leave that at default. Still on your basic settings, have a quick look at your multicast. Now, <clears throat> this is going to tell you whether you're going to be using multicast. Now, set to none by default. None means that it's going to page and ring and, and page, etc., all by itself, e.g., there's nothing else attached to it. If I set it to master, I immediately get these, um, these options opening up. And what this is basically saying that um, this is a single zone and it's actually zone one, but I can set it to the different zones. So I've got priority call, all calls, zone one to six, and music. Okay, so I'm set this one to zone one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the other setting I can use here is using DTMF. E.g., I dial the extension number, then dial a code. And I can do a single zone if I so wish and select the zone that I want. Okay, a lot more details are in the manual on this, but um, just gives you a look and feel of what, what we're doing here. So that's your multicast. The other thing is that when we're setting our slaves, I then <clears throat> can say that I'm a slave and I'm actually going to be um, sitting in zone one, zone two. So I just tick what zones this slave is going to be in. So if it's only going to be in zone one, no calls, no priorities, I just simply go like so. Don't forget to press save down here. But if I want it in two zones, I just tick the two zones I want and away you go. Now this is in basic mode. If I click on expanded mode, suddenly I've got 10 to 50 zones coming up. These are if you're using an 8301 controller unit. It's because it's got a whole bunch more zones in it and you can set up a lot more complicated um, solutions. Any other thing I wanted to show you, I'm just going to click to here. I just want to go to your advanced multitask. Sorry, multicast. And this is how basically the the um, the ports that we're actually going to be transmitting across. Okay. And the different um, we can have the different uh, zones paid, uh, sorry, chime in in different um, different ways. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So that was our basic settings back here. So we're now going to click into advanced. Most of this is look, it should look pretty familiar with for you. You've got your static IP or DHCP by default. DHCP, if you're going to be running VLANs, <coughs> differential services, and um, D, uh, DHCP timeout, etc., and seconds. Your admin covers off your password for logging into the beast, the host name, <coughs> uh, broadcast across the network. Um, Introduction section on the um, status page. Sorry, the um, status page if you want it on or off. Web interface timeout, e.g., if you don't log out, you can um, just sometimes that after one hour. Log levels, etc., hardware watchdog, etc. The time, again, pretty straightforward. If we're going to um, just put our uh, time zone in of uh, what we want, and um, away we go there. Uh, NTP server. Provisioning. Provisioning is either enabled or disabled. Um, DHCP by default is enabled, but it used DH, DHCP option 66, which is running on your DHCP <coughs> on your network and redirects it to a um, provisioning server. Talks about the download, download methods and the paths that the files are sitting in. The tones are simply basically what do you want it to play? For example, you're ringing. You've got all of these different um, ringing options here. Um, oh, I won't do that. But these are the files that are actually there. The thing I just wanted to show you down here is you can actually up, um, delete, rename. You can actually upload files here. So as long as they're in 8 kilo, kilohertz and 16 kilohertz, 8-bit mono, uh, PCM, UA files, you can actually create your own um, own files and upload them to the 8180. So this can be for set announcements, ringtones, anything you want it to do. Advanced ring alert. This is quite a handy little beastie. We've talked about the first SIP registration for ringing and paging. Well, this is a, a, another four sets of 
registrations for ringing. So again, I can add another extension here, say for example, 200, authentication 200, password, and um, then when I ring it, what tone do I want it to ring? So again, this was um, from earlier in the presentation, I was talking about um, uh, having a, a warehouse where you've got two companies in it and you want the one ring, one company to ring one way and one company to ring the other. The Elgo can do this easily. And so the staff can identify who's who's ringing and answering. Okay, moving on, because this is just a quick overview. Speaker mode, <clears throat> um, auto, internal, external, disabled. Okay, what this is meaning is on the back of the... Um, on the back of the 8180, you would have seen an output speaker, okay? Auto means it's whatever it's been told to do. External means use the external speaker only. And internal means use only the internal, not the external. The relay mode is both ring, page, and what you're gonna use the relay for, for fire. Do you want the message waiting light on when there's a message or flashing when there's a message? Heartbeat light, enable, disable. Did you the blue lights just sitting there flashing? This is um, on the actual 8180 itself. And the page light. So when it actually pages, does the light come on? Um, internal um, speaker terminal input, etc. <clears throat> Advanced SIP. We start talking about proxy servers, etc. And uh, using differential ports, etc. And advanced multicast, we've already had a quick look at. This is these these are the, the ports and how it transmits across the network. Really, you wouldn't bother changing these unless for some reason um, the IT manager um, for that particular network, if it's a managed network, says, listen, I don't want it using this, I want it using these settings. So that's, it's flexible, they can be changed. Um, let's have a look at the system. Download config file, restore config file. Reboot the device if we so wish. Um, upgrade firmware, etc. All on this page. We head to the system log. We can download the system logs, etc. Then it tells you a little bit about the um, what the unit is, IP address, sorry, MAC address, and um, software version. Okay, so that is in a nutshell a very quick overview of the um, Elgo 8180. As you can see.